Okay, my friends, this is going to be pretty difficult because uh, this goes back to 2014. And there's a helicopter flying over Siberia. And guess this is what happens. And I was involved in this. Now listen. A helicopter crew flying over Siberia discovers something mysterious. A crater more than 80 feet wide and deeper than a 15-story building. Sinkholes are no... All right. These are sinkholes. And I'm going to show you right now. I posted to them. This was on... Uh, I said, I am a mud fossil, I am a fossil researcher, <clears throat> and it requires understanding the earth, the features in the earth, and which very few do, and they don't. I did videos on these sinkholes when a Florida man was sucked in in 2013. A Japanese researcher told me the Russians wanted to discuss these holes with me. At the time, there was 13 of these holes. This was 2014. This just was when they discovered them. They didn't, they didn't know what to think. And I spoke with, I, I think it was a um, Russian Academy of Sciences, but it was a while back. I'm not, I, I, I don't have any names or anything, but I did talk to him, and I, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of good news for him, and I still don't. I mean, I'm, you know, if you're going to be honest, I'm going to be honest. we got a problem here, and it's not going to get better quick. And um, I talked to him about the holes as I studied them for many years. I understand them and the gases that can what can and cannot be done about this. It's a very dynamic situation we're facing. And I, under the Fair Use Act, I believe I'm permitted to show their content, even though it's copyrighted. And I just hope that they understand I'm just trying to help, and this is vital information. And I love PBS and NOVA. All right. At the time that I talked to the Russians, I had no, I had no hope whatsoever to offer them. I said, "There's nothing can be done. We're done. This case is closed. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse," which it is. However, in the meantime, I've discovered we may be able to get free energy by using lasers to separate light and create enormous amounts of energy. And if we did that, we'd have f literally free energy. And that is the only way out of our situation. The more we burn, the more we combust, the more our atmosphere grows, the more we scrub. I don't think they understand. Our outside atmosphere is 2,700 degrees. It just didn't accumulate heat up there for some reason. We're scrubbing through the universe, and it's scraping our, our, our outer atmosphere. And as it gets bigger and bigger, it scrapes harder and harder. All right, if you're not familiar with the sinkholes, I don't know where you've been, but they're all over the Earth, and now especially they're showing up <clears throat> in the polar regions, in the Arctic, where it's freezing cold because it's always been frozen. Now they're collapsing, and I know what they are. And I did videos on this six, seven years ago, exactly what I'm doing today, and it was disregarded. Anyway, let's go with this here. I just want you to see what the story is all about, and I'm going to narrate this as they go forward. What when a frozen world locked away for millennia starts to thaw? In 2014, a helicopter crew flying over Siberia discovers something mysterious. A crater more than eight... All right, <clears throat> this is when there was 13 craters up here. And, uh, and I talked to the Russians. I said, you know, there's just really literally nothing you can do. These are going to collapse. Methane is going to escape out of them. These are the digesters of the Earth. I know oh, Roger's crazy. Well, no, I'm not. 80 feet wide and deeper than a 15-story building. Sinkholes are nothing new. But this is no ordinary sinkhole. The ground has exploded. There's no way. This is not real. Yes, it is real. And the reason it's exploded is just like if you took something and you buried a carcass and there was no way for the methane gases to get out because that's what happens in decom uh, decomposition of biological creatures or even, you know, grasses and all that stuff. It, it, that's what spontaneous combustion is, is basically all it is. More Siberian craters have since been discovered. They're all over the place. There's even evidence they may be appearing in Alaska. They're everywhere. The lake bottom went from being flat, 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 and then it just dropped out. And they show no sign of stopping. Now, I'm going to show you why. 
and it's not it's not a hard thing to understand if you let your mind open up a little bit here we go okay I know this is going to sound absolutely insane but these holes are bio digesters the earth at one time was alive and consuming everything that was in it and digesting it into the earth and now it, it's I believe the earth is dead because it's not doing its natural digestion now and it's creating methane gases from dead decaying organisms listen to this now listen carefully about the methane most sinkholes have a rim that is flat not raised these are blowing out and while sinkholes collapse inwards the team discovers debris spread far outside the crater explosions pieces of rocks and ice are flying sometimes in quite a long distance from 200 meters to 500 meters and in one case it was distance to 900 meters this might have been the guy I was talking to as I was just like him but you know I guess well, all Russians sound pretty much alike but <laughs> You know, this is, he, he's, he's right. These things are exploding. And that's because of the methane gases. It's supposed to, when things die and they are com under a pile, they explode. It's, you know, com spontaneous combustion. Debris like this can be thrown out by the impact of an asteroid. But there are no other signs of a massive object striking Earth. For the scientists, that leaves only one reasonable explanation. A gigantic natural explosion. I don't know if there are many Earth system processes that have never occurred. I mean, in my lifetime, or at least to scientific understanding, that have never occurred and that we're starting to see as a new process. So what could have provided the power for such a massive blast? There is no sign of lava or volcanic rock, so this clearly isn't a volcano. But exploring inside the crater, sampling the air and water at the bottom, the scientists do discover an intriguing clue. Unusually high levels of a single gas, methane. Well, there's not a big clue there. It's just obvious if something is dead and decaying, what is methane? Methane is produced by the breakdown or decay of organic material. It can be introduced into the atmosphere, either natural process, such as the decay of plant material in wet wetlands, seepage of gas underground deposits, the digestion of food by cattle, or human activities, such as oil and gas. All the oil and gas is nothing more than decaying bodies. And, and vegetation. They know they call them fossil fuels. It's not a big mystery. And the last thing I want to say until we get into this is that I am offering some hope here, but I need somebody to pay attention to this. I am going to show you details that I don't know how anybody can dispute them, how I can be blocked for showing this stuff. Very, very upsetting. Okay, I, I have tried and racked my brain. The only way out of this is to get free energy that does not expand. And the only way to do that is to take light and accelerate it to a point where it actually disintegrates the light and creates the muon and the electron showers. These are the black ones are the muons. The electron showers are here. This is explosive white, ex totally interactive, amazingly radiant energy and the black is just nothing it's just a ball of solidness it doesn't absorb it doesn't emit it doesn't reflect and I have discovered it will not concuss and we can use this I believe if someone will pay some attention and nobody does to create this kind of energy and absorb it before it recombines with the black send it through our devices and then let it get back to the black the same thing with the laser we could send a little bit up and just continue this process and we have literally free energy almost forever and it's all solid state I can't even see it hardly ever breaking down okay this one I just did the other day low cost sustainable fusion breakthrough and this is fission and then fusion the first thing comes out is the white particles that burn the hell out of this thing and then comes the black particles and concuss it watch it's blowing all its little parts away and have to bring them back so everything turns around and comes back watch what happens 
The first thing it will glow like crazy. Now it's just burning. It's just burning. Boom, there it goes. That's and when now everything comes back. All right, that was when the dark, the first ones were the white particles, and it just burns. There's no, no concussion to them. They're just burners. Then comes the black ones. Boom, that's when it's all over. The black ones are like bowling balls. The white ones are like little puffy cotton balls. Basically, think of them just exactly like that. And this can glow and get really brilliant. This just doesn't do anything. It only wants to be attached to that one. It appears to me this is the way light travels in a, a spinning disc like that. And what it is, is it's a particle like that, and it spins. And there's a whole batch of them coming through there. It's not just one. Now, most of them end up going through the center because it's going to go from this way, it's going to go from that way, and so forth. But some, because this is just the tiniest little slit. And they're getting through here, and then when they get on the other side, they push each other apart. That's what creates these interference patterns. Those are repulsion patterns. Once they get through here, they are alone, and they don't want to be next to any other white ones. They just push them away. Now, we see them as red because that's the color they present in this frequency. Now, let me show you the green. All right, let me just try to explain to you what light is and what the particles of light are. I was in this 50 years ago. I was in the Army. I was in nuclear uh, Nike Hercules missiles. After that, I went into physics and all that stuff. And I realized the Bohr model did not work. There's no such thing as a gigantic positive core with little tiny floaters around it. It was a dipole. And the dipoles really are the electrons I showed you. They're back-to-back -back particles. And they glue to each other. And the core of everything is a dipole. I have a little chart here somewhere to show that. Here it is, right here. This is what the particles of light look like. Just like that. But they're not just one particle. They're two particles. And each one of them is what we would have always called an electron. But an electron itself cont contains the dark particle. The dark particle is heavier than hell. It's just a bomb. It's just a big bowling ball. It doesn't burn anything. It just pushes. This one is a burner. It doesn't push. Simple as that. And this one can, can glow like crazy and get low and glow and get low. This one just doesn't do anything other than try to get back to one of these. When two of them are together, they bounce. That's called a photon, and you see it bounce back at you as light. When you add, and it's, there's some kind of a frequency in the universe that makes everything stable at a certain frequency, and that is what creates protons. These are magnetic particles. They push and they shove and they jiggle and they do all this, but at a certain point, boop, they stop all of that. They just lay there together and say, okay, we're good, you're good, I'm good, everybody's good. That's called a proton. And that is right around 1839. Ions are a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. They're, they're just charged particles. 1840 would be a neutron, which means it has an even number of these particles. So it doesn't want another one to jump in there. It's a neutron. This one wants to attach to something else, a proton. It says, hey, I'd like to have another electron come in and join with my cloud. And they say, okay, I'm a hydrogen, I'll come over and I'll join with you, because that has one extra electron, and that can bond with things. So we're going to get deep into this chemistry and all that, because it's, all of this plays into, a, into the whole thing. There's nothing but chemistry. This is chemistry. It's light, but it's nothing but particles, and particles make up chemistry. It is chemistry. This is strictly pulsed red laser, do, 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 from a construction laser, no, none special. This is strictly gases in the air. Nothing special here. And what are we looking at? We're looking at glowing little particles. Why are they glowing? Because this is coming through the air saying, everybody's got to get out of the way. And it's creating a wave ahead of the particle. And that wave impacts all of the molecules in the air because they are all electrons too. So this is the point at which it's starting to really impact. And then it starts to accelerate. And why? Because there's a venturi here. And what is a venturi? It's a slit, a single slit. And what's so special about it? It's configured in a way that it makes a pinch. 
The blacks are so big and like bowling balls, they cannot get through. It's exactly the right size to allow the white ones to squirt through, but the black ones just slam, bam, 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 bam. You saw it push the house. It's pushing these white ones through. That's what it's doing. Now, once the white ones are free from the black ones, they're ready to do some, do some work. They're just saying, hey, 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 I got to get back to those black ones. I said, well, before you get there, you're going to have to go out there and run that motor. I don't care what you do, but I got to get back to the black ones. And that's what they're doing here. We need to intervene right here. Just precisely, precisely what I showed you here. And what we need to do is make transition metal films. Thin film transition metals will absorb all these depths of, of electrons. There's, there's electrons coming out of your earlobes here. And then we could drive, and it goes, they say, it increases the energetic, energetic value 200 times. So that would be like, say, a 5 watt laser, a little puppy. You turn to 1,000 watts. You need to use another 5 watts, 20 watts, 50 watts to keep this thing going. You still got a ton of extra electricity. And this stuff is dirt cheap. Cheaper than dirt. It is dirt. <laughs> now, what happens to that particle? What is this particle? Well, I showed you before, but we'll see it again. Here it is right here. It's two electrons together. And these puppies will glow, and these will stay black and solid. And I have shown that, which I will again right now, so that we don't lose track of what we're talking about. Here they are in their magnificent glory. That particle is going this way. That's glowier than that. You don't see it normally. You wouldn't notice that. But we had it enhanced, and here it is right there. Fabian Boulay did the enhancements on a lot of this stuff. And there's different apps you can use now that will pick up on these pixelated CMOS luminations and turn them into beautiful, I mean, little... This one's obviously going through. Remember I showed you the particles getting all accelerated or, or getting all charged up in front of the, the particle coming through the air, the, the photon? Well, that's because this one is hitting the white. These electrons, anytime an electron pushes another electron, it glows. These are glowing, these are glowing. I mean, this one's glowing. Now, what about that one? Well, it's not hitting anything. It's going this way. The black one's in front of it. The black one does not interact. You don't see any glow here. It's not hitting anything. It just says, I'm just going, I'm having a nice time. As long as I'm attached to a couple of white ones, I'm, I'm ready to go. And this one says the same thing. So I'm not, look. This one is identical to that one. They do not change size. They are heavier than hell. They do not glow. They concuss. Case closed. And I say that's dark matter. And this is what they look like in the photon configuration. Just prior to separating into Venturi. All right, I just reviewed this, and I made a mistake. I said they do not concuss, and then I said later they do concuss. Well, they do concuss. What I meant to say in the first place was they do not compress. The black ones, they never change. They're just like a bowling ball that hits things and just bounces. But it hits hard. It's a big, heavy-duty bugger. And these just glow and pop and fizz and, and, and do all kinds of things. And they can become separated from their black partners. Obviously, I showed it, and I'm going to show it over and over until somebody pays attention. Okay, everybody's looking for nuclear power. Well, you don't get any more nuclear than this. This is down deep into the nucleus, into muons and electron showers. Muon neutrinos, electron neutrinos. This is it right here. The black ones are the muons. They do not change. They come in as the pair I showed you, as that four-banger. And boom, the white ones just get squirted through. Because the black ones just keep slamming them and pushing them. Nobody's ever expected this. I didn't expect it. This just fell out of the sky. This is nothing I... And Rod Warren was the one that did this stuff. And everybody's laughed at him. And I certainly didn't laugh when I saw it. I said, I know what this guy did. And he didn't, he didn't realize what he did either. So it's just, this is just an accident. Why can't we take advantage of an accident? Just so you know, it's not just the red. It's the red, green, and the blue. They're all the same. Same particle, it's just one spins faster than the other one. All right, just so you can see the progression. This is right at the Ventura. You saw the wave coming through there, and all of a sudden, it went out. This is it right here. This is what it, they look like when they start. Then as they stack up against the Venturi, they, they, they create their signature. 
and they call them 2P, 2H now. 2Ps are the whites, 2Hs are the holes. Now they're also calling them tetraquarks, four particles. There they are right there. And I'm blocked from everywhere. Nobody sees this stuff. So, you know, the earth is going to crash. I'm telling you right now, it's not good. But anyway, right here, they cannot get through that slit together. They have to separate. And the white goes through in a shower, and the black goes around as I showed, and as I will show now. All right, there's the venture. There's the whites squirting through, but they're getting slammed like somebody with a slammer pushing them. They can't get out. They have to go through, and they come out of there in sprays. I mean, that's just brilliant power. Absolutely stunning amount of energy right there. And there's no reason we can't tap into it here. And then it's contained. It doesn't expand. It's the expansion. Okay, this is a galaxy, and it's spinning to the right. And as it spins to the right, its arms are like this, but it's hitting particles out here, and it's pushing the arms back. That's why they're twisted back. And it, it wrenches it eventually, just like you took it and wrenched it. That's why it's getting so hot in the center, because it's forcing those particles together, just like our Venturi did. All right, so here we are on the arm of the Milky Way, spinning forward like this. The sun is spinning, we're spinning, every planet is spinning, because it's being forced to spin because of the concussion on the electrons that are on this, the, everywhere in the universe. It's saturated. They used to call it the ether. It's forcing electrons and particles to be pushed off the sun. We go through them. It's called the, the um, solar wind. And what has happened? We scrub. We're scrubbing through these particles. It's not just nothing there, a vacuum. We just go through it and everything's fine. We're uh, scrubbing. And I'll show you what that looks like and why it creates the heat. First of all, if you don't think the sun's given off a ton of particles and light, well, obviously, we know it's given off all that stuff. This is a solar eclipse. So the moon is in front of the sun. You see that little spot there? <laughs> I've talked about these a lot. It's spinning this way. In space, you don't have a wire running from the positive, you know, from out through, around. You're like doing a battery. you got a positive and negative. It has to go from one to the other. Here, it's just going into space. But they create fields because they want to get back to this side. That's why you have them coming out and going in. This is what the... That's the poles. Now, this is all particles flowing out into the ether of space. In my 1970 paper, I said that light is atomic vapor, and that's exactly what it is. I'm sorry to say, but this is our scrub right here against all the particles that are flowing against us, and we're pushing through as we spin on the arm of the Milky Way. We're scrubbing like hell out here. It's 2,700 degrees out here. 2,700, why? It's only 100 down here. It's 2,700, way out there. Why? It's because it's scrubbing. The sun, 7,000 on the surface. Millions. Way out there. Why? It's scrubbing. All the particles it's shooting out are scrubbing. They're trying to be forced back. All of these particles are forcing into us. We're scrubbing against them. They're infusing themselves. There's 50 lightning strikes a second on Earth. And that's because these are particles that create lightning. They're being forced into our atmosphere because of this scrub. And these lightning storms are getting worse and sprites and hurricanes and tornadoes and all of this swishing because we're scrubbing. That's what the tornadoes and hurricanes are from. And all of the extreme weather, uh, floods and, you know, rains and, you know, it's all this interaction. And the only way to solve this is to bring these gases down so that we're not expanding them. We're, we're, we're in, I don't know if it's possible. I've got to be perfectly honest with you. I am not going to lie. I don't think it is possible to be perfectly honest. But if we don't try, it's never going to happen, and your kids will not grow up to, to see old age. Have a nice day. Okay, I believe I've shown all of these things. It says light, light is a particle. It is a particle. Light behaves mainly like a wave, but it can also be considered to consist of tiny particles of energy called photons. 
They carry a fixed amount of energy but have no mass. No, that is not true. Photons have a lot of mass, but it's only in the dark part. The white part is just the explosive part, and that has no mass that I can find. The, uh, uh, burns like hell, but it has no push. I showed you the, the, the atomic bomb blast. The first thing just it burns, it just burns right up, and then boom! And then it all comes back because the white particles want to get back to the black particles who don't even move. They just, they're still back where the bomb went off. So everything turns around and comes back. The energy of the photon depends on its wavelength. Yes, longer wavelengths, which is red, photons have less energy. Shorter wavelengths have more energy. Yes, red photons, for example, have less energy than blue ones. Yes, until, and then it goes on and on and on. Now, can I show these things? Absolutely, I can show them. Red, green, blue. And I've shown you the red. I'm going to show you the green. I think I've shown you that too. But I'm going to show you how energetic this is compared to that, compared to this. Now, more energetic wavelengths, such as blue and ultraviolet, cause more electrons. Absolutely. Because they're smashing harder to be ejected than red or infrared wavelengths. It's just the, the, the amount of spin. And I'll show you that. They also found that increasing the intensity of the light increased the number of electrons ejected, but not their speed. Precisely what I showed you with the light into the into the little LEDs. Now, Planck realized that the energy of the electromagnetic radiation was proportional to its frequency. And what does that mean, frequency? Frequency is like on a wave. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes That's how the frequency is how fast it's going up and down. Now, it's actually spinning. When they look at it from the side, it looks like it's just bouncing up and down, but it's really going like this, and I can show that and prove it. So it was proportional to its frequency. So the energy, the faster it spin, spins, the more energy it has. He admitted he didn't understand why this was the case and said it was lucky guesswork. Well, it's not lucky guesswork. It's just obvious when you think about it. If something's spinning faster than something else, it's, it's hitting harder when it spins and whacks into something. Simple as that. All right, once again, highly energetic this time. The green, much higher energy. And this one is in the process of flipping. You see, the white is leading. It's coming here. That's getting glowier, and it's going to flip. And then this one will come in front and start absorbing the energy. That's how they just go flip, 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 flip. flip. It's called, a, I think they call it the muon wobble. All right, once again, here's our Venturi. Now, this is green. This is different than the red. The red we could separate. And again, I didn't do these. I'm not taking credit for this. Rod Warren is the guy that did this. And he's the one that should get credit for And Somebody should, this guy put six, seven, ten, probably ten years into this. Anyway, these are the particles. It starts to get real, uh, one glows and it starts to taper off as it goes out. Now, this is the Venturi and it's coming through. Now, let me show you what can happen to those particles coming through the green. Now, we had the red completely separate, but the green, a little bit different. Now, this is the green, and it is concussing absolutely unbelievably. And again, here's our Venturi. Now, here's the key here. The blacks are coming through with the white. You're still getting the separation patterns. If, and this side, there's no black at all. So I think he's got it, like, cocked a little bit so that it's forcing the black and the whites to go to this side and only the whites to go to that side. And that could be an interesting interaction that we might be able to use. But you can see the blacks are separated from the whites and this is the green, this is just exactly like the, the red. Only the red we completely separated. Well, let's look at it one more time. And you know, this is exactly what CERN and Fermi Lab are looking for and they have me blocked. They want to see an electron neutrino and a muon neutrino, a black and white ball. And then they want to see the showers, and they want to see the black one just go on its way. And it's exactly what we got. Now, as I said, this is 100% separation. There is not even the tiniest taste of black in here. Zero. That's a scrape on my screen. <laughs> this is 100% white. So we have completely 100% separated the black from the white. Now, is this going to be a better nuclear reaction because this is what it is this is a nuclear reaction this is down in the nucleus of of it's light it's even lower than the nucleus it's in the subatomic range in atomic vapor this is atomic vapor and normally it was two little back-to-back -back bar magnets and they break apart now 
there's a lot of work to do here. This is not done. This is, you know, why can't somebody look at this? Very distressing. The planet is going to crash, and this, this is, as far as I can determine, virtually no other possibility exists to keep the expansion from happening and still power our planet. It's just impossible. This is 100% self-contained, literally should be free for anybody in the world. They can clean their water, they can clean their air, they can grow plants under lights. This is the only thing I can tell you right now that could possibly save our, our world. And I don't even know if it's possible now. But we, if we get started today, who knows? I can tell you what, if we don't get started today, tomorrow is not going to look good. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this. This is my good friend Pedro, who was with NASA and the European Space Agency. Sends me all kinds of stuff, and it's all the latest. Now, this is the Sandia Lab. They're doing exactly what we're doing, trying to measure what the output is, and they got 20 million volts. What they're doing is the same thing we're doing. His team at Sandia Labs have used a crystal smaller than a dime and a laser smaller than a shoebox <laughs> to safely measure 20 million volts without making physical contact to the electrode. You can read the whole thing, but they, what they're doing is they're picking up on the extreme high voltage. And that's what we're doing, too. I, I can't measure it, but they can. Why don't they measure some of the stuff we're putting out? If we're putting out something that has a ton of extra voltage, we didn't do anything whatsoever to increase it other than put it through the Venturi. All right. I think I showed you that they were taking a shoebox-sized thing and they were testing all this high energy. This would be it right here. It, this is a Geiger counter. However, you wouldn't need anything much bigger than this. You could carry this around. You could have a bunch of outlets in here. 110, 220, 50 cycle, 60 cycle, AC, DC, anything you want. Once you get that electrons freed, you can just distribute them any way you want. Capacitors and have a whole bunch of stuff. You could just take this and plug your car into it and go drive down the street. Take it, go into your house, plug your house into it, and your house powers up. You know, you might need bigger than this, but this, this, this technology is not... Is not like science fiction. This, I, well, I'm showing more than anybody else is showing. And and again, I'm not bragging. I'm not saying this is a, you know, anything that is of my doing. I just want to make sure somebody picks up on this and does something. Because other than that, we're screwed.